Welcome to the second assessment task. This is the explainer video telling you what to expect for the marketing technology engagement analysis, the ET. In this, it is as always supported by the Word document that's up on the Wattle site. And the Word document has the deep dive details into things like the marking rubric and some of the expectations per section and some of the technical details. Both this video, its accompanying PowerPoints, and the Word document are the things that you need to work through in order to fully understand what it is we're looking for out of the subject's assessment task, item number one. So we want to give you the chance to work this over, but also if you find there's a section that needs clarification and you give us feedback, Please take note that up in the top corner of the document, there is a version number. So close to assignment submission time, please check back on the site to make certain you are working with the most recent version. And we will make it clear whether there's been an upgrade and the version number will be in the link. And one of the things about this particular assessment task is that you get to submit the assignment. We give you feedback, and if you need feedback in areas that need to be actioned to make your project work better for you, then we will give you a chance to do a resubmission. On the site, you'll see that we have a couple of things I want to draw your attention to. The forum thread, again, I'm gonna say this for every assessment task. If there is something that you want clarified, if you wanna know more, if you want detailed explanations, or you want me to work over another section or explain it again, or you found a mistake, please post to the forum thread. Now, in terms of connection with the rest of the subject, the ET is the first task in, first task that you're going to get grades for, which is also why I want to give you the opportunity to recover. Uh, if you score a credit or lower, so pass conceded, PX, pass or credit, you have the opportunity to resubmit the paper and your resubmission grade is capped at a distinction. Two reasons here. First is that it's capped at distinction because I'm not letting distinction students resubmit. And it seems really unfair that if you've got a pass in your first round, that you'd be able to come back with an HD when the distinction students had to just take the money and run. And the second thing is that if you've got a distinction or a high distinction, I don't have significant feedback for you. And I don't have actionable feedback for you to correct its task. So I don't want you marks hunting. I don't want you going, oh, well, I got 16 out of 20, but I could come back and get 17. That energy that you could spend for that one point would be better put somewhere else. I want you, if you are sitting on nine out of 20, to have a chance to go and fix the problems with the plan, the proposal, and the ideas that got you into that spot so you can have a really good semester. Because this subject is heavily crosswired, this project that you are going to pitch to me through the document is going to make a big difference to how much you get out of the rest of the semester. And it's also heavily tied to the performance review at the tail end of the season. So I'd kind of like you to have the best shot that you can have. All right, so it is worth 20 points. It's up to 2000 words, 2000 plus or minus 10%, the usual deal. Submission is through Wattle via Turnitin. The usual arrangements there in terms of the plagiarism match is going to be used, so don't be dumb about it. There's no reason whatsoever for you to text match another assignment because this should be one of the most custom things that you ever write. In terms of getting it done, I'd like you to really appreciate how crosswired this is. The ET is going to help us with some of the content around the seminars from weeks one to four. Once you have submitted this, you then have a live living case study that you get to use from here to the end of semester. So every seminar thereon afterwards, when we ask about applying the theory or doing something in practice, the question is around, how does that work for you in your project? So your live project becomes a source of knowledge for the students in the Zoom room with you and for yourself. Second thing is that the technology performance review, um, the post review, whatever we end up calling it, that's due at the tail end of the semester and it is tied 
very closely to what you set up in this assignment, which is another reason for us to get this assignment the best it can be. This is also tied to a work integrated learning. One aspect that I was very keen on when I rebuilt this subject is to have a self-service internship. You are going to manage your own ongoing project for the length of this semester. It should be beneficial for you. You should be looking at this from the perspective of what is my opportunity here to spend a course length of time working towards a project of benefit for me. You're also going to be implementing. You're going to tell me a plan and then you're going to deliver on that plan. And we're going to talk week by week. How are you going? We're going to check in. We're going to support each other. And we are going to make a real project. So you're going to set yourself up for your own success. And I want you really to lean into that co-creation opportunity of this assignment, the platform is for you to choose, the topic areas for you to choose. It's very open-ended to give you the flexibility to get the best out of that experience. But equally, it is a relationship marketing event in that I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust that you will commit into this project and you will deliver on your side of the deal. And then at the far end of the season, it will all pay off for both of us but also that along the way we will support each other. I will provide opportunities in the classroom for you, you to take a theoretical concept, an idea from marketing, and make it into a reality in your project. In return, I would ask that you share that learning and that experience back to your classmates and your classmates share with you so that you're building up this, this big pool and portfolio of knowledge. So the assessment structure itself, there are five parts to consider, there is the first three, self-service, platform, design outcome, and the game plan, which has a visual and a textual component. So the game plan is a merger of tell me what you're gonna do and show me what you're gonna do, which is why I mentioned that there's five parts and four bullet points. Also, it's an ANU assignment. It is an assignment. It will have referencing. You will use the references. You will not engage in academic misconduct. You will engage in academic glory and you will have a damn fine time of it as you're going through because references make it easier for you. The whole point of what we're about to explain to you is to give you the best possible opportunity to score the best marks, but also learn stuff and have a good time doing it. As I mentioned before, there is an ongoing consequence event. One of the things you have to do in this First assignment is you have to make a set of decisions and you have to commit to implementation of those decisions. And I know for a bunch of students, this is the worst. It is just your opportunity cost assessments go through the roof. Your fear of missing out takes off. We are going to address that and we're gonna spend four weeks getting you through that. You're not alone, you got back up here. Mission critical is you are gonna pick a platform you're going to specify your project, you're going to set goals for yourself, and then you're going to go out and deliver it. Consequence of which will flow through into the rest of the subject. This document you are creating will guide you through your self-service internship, which you will then document and report upon in the e-marketing post review, in the e-marketing technology performance review. Your experience can feed into the portfolio. And we're going to ask you, how does this theory apply to your project? And we're going to want to hear from you because what you're doing is going to be of interest to those around you. So we're really keen to make this the absolute heartbeat of the subject. Now on the technical requirements here, I've mentioned this, you're going to make a decision. You need to make that decision. Trying to avoid the decision just means I'm going to send the assignment back to you and make you do it again. Decisions get made, decisions have consequences, consequences have outcomes, outcomes get documented, and the documentation scores you points. It's all good. It's all on purpose. So the project, there is a supporting document to go with this self-service internship project, and that is the big book of things you can do with the internet, uh, where I talk about a whole bunch of different platforms, ideas, and other things that you can make use of. Please note, in previous years, I have had students, upon seeing the big book of projects and seeing something in there go, oh, I can't do that now because you've said it. That's the exact opposite of the purpose of the big book. If you've come up with an idea and you come to me and you're like, I want to run this project and I respond positively, would you not want to run the project because I'm happy about it? It will be 
difficult to come up with something possibly I haven't thought of doing with the internet, uh, but if you do, I will be very happy because I've learned a new thing. If you come to me with something that I have suggested from the big book of ideas, I will be happy because you're doing a thing. And if you come to me with something that I've already, that I'm doing myself, I will also be happy because I have an Instagram account. If you're gonna do a project on Instagram, of course I'm gonna be pleased to see that. If you're gonna do a project on anything other than Instagram, I'm equally gonna be pleased. Either I learn or I confirm, however it goes. I'm here to help you get something out of this. In this first section, and this is feedback from the last two years, by the way, so this has where we've changed the assignment based on feedback from the previous subjects. Tell me about what your project is. Tell me about what you're going to do for the next semester. You can have your project be based on supporting an existing, if you are a member of a club and society at the ANU, you can do a project that is the management of their social media for the semester. Equally, if you're working for a family business, you can tell me what you're going to do in terms of if you want to manage the family business account for the next semester, you can do that. If you have your own existing projects that are underway at the moment, you would tell me in here what that project is, and then you tell me how you're going to use in the next section, how you're going to use the um, requisite technology platform to make it work. What I want to know out of part one is what are you going to be doing? And I want you to be able to explain it to me as a marketer. Explain it in marketing mix. Tell me about what's going to be done in this project. Now there's more detail in the Word document than there is on the slide. Segmentation targeting positioning is real and happened because I'm going to ask you, who is this project for? Who are you targeting as your audience with this project? I'm going to ask you about something which I've written up in the big book of ideas and that is consumer, conducer, prosumer, producer. Those four concepts are in the big book which is the way you think is going to be best for you to do. What I want you to do in this semester is go from give me a technical definition to tell me how it's going to work. What is the product you are going to offer? What is your project's value proposition? What is the offering that has value you are going to create for an audience, for a specific audience this semester? So part one has a world of marketing opportunity in there. And look, I'm gonna say from the outset, I will make fun of you if you do not use co-creation of value and the marketing mix. So you gotta cite that, you gotta cite co-creation of value, you gotta cite marketing mix, just be smart about it. But also I want you to really look at what it is you wanna do and tell that story as a marketer. Part two of the assignment, welcome to the platform. What are you going to use to deliver your project? Case in point, this subject uses the Moodle platform to deliver the subject. I use Zoom to deliver the seminars. I use YouTube or Echo360 to deliver these videos. I use Wattle to deliver the PowerPoints and the Word documents. Those are my platforms. My platform is Zoom, my platform is Moodle, my platform is YouTube. I want you to talk about those plat the platform that you're going to use. I want it to be a singular platform. I want you to focus on a priority. Now, if you're like me and you already have a uh, half a dozen accounts tucked away in the background, uh, the reason, you're only going to 500 words and I want you to be very precise about what you're doing here because now we're starting to see the consequences. Tell me your project, tell me how you're going to get that project to the market through the use of a platform. So if you want to sell secondhand clothes and you're going to go around secondhand stores, op shopping and sell those clothes, resell those clothes through Depop, op shop acing, you tell me about the technology, tell me about the platform. Details again in the Word doc, another place where you want there to be marketing theory because so as soon as you pick your platform, get onto Google Scholar and go find what has been written about that platform. Go look up what has been said about the specific platform, find me citations and references that you will then apply and use the ideas from those to bolster and support your rationale for why your project on this platform, what target market that platform appears to want and do you fit that target market? And then, how are you going to do that co-creation of value? What do you think is going to happen over the course of the semester through your use of this platform to pursue your project? How are you going to do co-creation? 
because you are a user of that platform as you are attempting to push your project forward. Part three, this is the one that also makes a bunch of people cry because we suddenly pivot. I've just gone from two very, very technical specified elements into what do you want out of this project? Tell me about your goals, your motives, your vision. You are running a project on a platform for a period of time. What do you personally seek to gain from? What's your end game? What's your goal here? And I want it to be meaningful. And I want it to be significant for you. And I want you to use this as that fire and that driver to make your semester absolutely rich in experience that you want. It's not about process states. It's not about, oh, I want to get an HD. What's your game plan? What's your driver? And there's some opportunities to lean in. Like you can, it's the lowest area for citations, but you could. Because also remember your motivation. Motivation comes out of consumer behavior theory. See if there's anything in there. Where are you on the self-actualization pyramid on this one? Also, I hate that Maslow hierarchy of needs. It's terrible. Uh, but where are you in some of these frameworks and theories? What is it? Are you trying to present the self? Are you trying to present, uh, is this a pragmatic exercise? Is this a hedonic exercise? What is it that you're after? Who's your role model? Who's your icon? Who's your inspiration? I want to be a YouTube sensation. I could cite which YouTuber is of influence to me. Is it Uncle Roger or is it Mr. Beast? Which, those are two totally different approaches. Is your Instagram approach about business to business or is it about art? Who are the Instagram accounts that you are looking at saying, I want to be them or I want to be better than them? Cite your influences. Be conscious of who you want to be like. Counts as a reference. Counts as a citation. Because the key is, we want you to run the project your way. We want it to be co-creation of value. We want it to be meaningful, important, and significant for you. You've got to lean into it, and you've got to provide that guidance to yourself, because this will also be your touchstone. Later in semester, when it's all coming off the rails, because the assignments are due everywhere, and you are like, why am I doing this? All oh, right, that's my motive. All right, part four, the big money end of the proceedings. You are going to deliver unto me a plan. And that plan section is going to have a set of goals. There's going to be two goals minimum, five goals maximum. This was an area where there was a lot of feedback uh, provided and I went through to really lean in to make certain people's goals were attainable. You are advised to apply everybody's favorite shorthand metric. The SMART goals are about making certain that when you set a goal, it has a set of criteria, holistic criteria, that when you look at the goal, you go, yep, yeah, I know what it is, what I go get done, when it's got to be done by, and how to get there. I'm going to ask that your goals have some sub points. There is going to be the game plan. How do you go from, I want to achieve this? How? Tell me how. The milestone is, what are my progress indicators? How will I know if I am on track? And the waypoint are the trigger events or the dates. A trigger event is can be a date of by week six, I will have achieved. By week eight, I will have achieved. Those are waypoints. Or it could be at 100 units input, I will have sold 50 units output. That's a trigger event. These are here to help you sit down and look at an 11 to 15 week project and go, what needs to get done by when? How will I know if I'm on track? What are my alarms and alerts that will let me know if I'm doing better than schedule or worse than schedule? This is an example. An example is my goal is to sell 10 handmade objects on Etsy by December the 1st. To do that, I need to make 10 objects. When will those happen? On a Tuesday, I will make it so I can have it ready to list on a Thursday. I need to make one object every week on the assumption that to make 10 objects over a 14 week period, some of them can go wrong. I am trying to sell, because you see my goal is a sales goal, sell 10 by December 1st. What are my milestones? Well, when I've completed slightly more than 50%, when I've completed six of the objects, I should have sold half of them already. I should have sold three of them. By November, I should have sold eight of my 10. 
in order to make my December deadline. These are trackers metrics. These are metrics and weighting. These are ways in which you can help yourself see what your outcomes are and what you need to do and what your time remaining for task remaining. And I say this as someone who is currently doing this activity. I'm doing the implementation of, I need to record a number of videos before semester. My go live date is July 11. I have a number of days and a number of tasks that must be attained each day in order for me to make my go live date. I'm living this as I'm explaining it to you because this is how it works. Now the game plan also requires a visualization and your game plan timeline goes past the performance review due date. The minimum last date on your is the submission date of the portfolio. When you submit your performance review, your project is still live and running. You will also need to do a visualization of your project. There needs to be some visual representation of the map from submission in week four through to conclusion at ePortfolio, or if you plan on keeping on doing this, some period past ePortfolio. If you don't put a visualization in, I just failed the assignment, send it back around and tell you to resubmit. So congratulations, you'd be volunteering to resubmit and capping your grade at a maximum distinction. Or you could do the visualization that I've requested. Now, one of the things, this was raised to me by last year's cohort. So I need you to think about, I'm not the only game in town for you this semester. You are not likely to be soloing my subject and nothing else. As a result, please think about the competing claims on your time when you're building your plan. When are other assessment tasks due? Do you have a day job that you're going to have to work with? Do you have competition commitments? Are you a sports person who has an athletic schedule who then has competition that they have to engage in? Then you're missing out. Uh, but this is also what the planning is about. It's about going, when am I going to create my content? What is my content? What are some, are there any events that I could draw upon? Again, visualization, timeline with waypoints or a calendar or a map or a visualization. We've put visualization tools at your disposal with Canva and a couple of other toolkits. Uh, you've got access to Office 365 through office.com. Play with the toys, make use of the tools, visualize. It's important that there is a visual document that you can make use of, that you can eyeball and go what gets done by when. And the last thing I want to talk to, I want to talk to a quick bit of advice. Be reasonable with yourself. I live a reasonably extreme content creation life. Uh, I have a YouTube show and I do 10 episodes of that and each of those episodes has five parts in it. So I create 50 things. 50 to 60 things for my show. And I do that over a period and the show runs for 10 weeks because in my day job, I create 50 to 60 items for my subject. So I have form in doing this. I've been doing this for 20 years. I've been creating content for a long time. You want to find your feet. You want to lean in. If you are a musician, how long does it take to record a song? Work that out, then say, all right, how many songs could I produce in a 10 week period? Cut that in half and there's your target. That way, if you produce more in that period, you've done better. So the key here is we wanna get you to set up, then deliver, make it something of value to you. So it's worth your time spent. It's time well used. And it will link, it'll cross link. It'll make it easier to do the courses. It's gonna make it easier to come to the seminar, to talk to your peers, because it's not that awkward. Oh, how do I apply the theory? What's, what's the example I can use? It's, oh, this, hey, yeah, friends, this is what I was doing with it this week. This is how I was using these ideas in my project to push my project further. So if you need to ask any questions, uh, I prefer you went with the forum. Uh, there'll be an opportunity on the Padlet as well, but there's the Padlet, the forum. You can contact me direct, but if I come up uh, against a really good question, I'll give you the initial answer over email, and then I'll put up something public in the main. The big thing to remember is that if you post it in the forum or the Padlet, it counts towards your participation and engagement, whereas if you sneak off an email to me, it doesn't, and uh, I get the participation and engagement score by publicly posting it later. And with that, mates, 
This is a really fun assessment task. It lets you really set up to have a great time in the semester. Our aim is you have the best experience you can and we kick it off with this assessment task that is designed to help you create something you want to do for the next 10 to 12 weeks. So see you at the seminars.